Today, what I want to show you is a function that will scan the data layer in GTM and pick out the thing that you want from the data layer and then echo the value of it or return the value of it, you should say. Here's my website. And if we click on this add to cart button here and then type in data layer in the developer console. We can see here that an add to cart event fires. And then nested within that is, uh, looks like it's the other one actually, add to cart event. Yeah, here it is. Nested within that, there is an items array. And because there are two positions in front of this items array, for example, if we grab it here, copy object path, add it here, and then just say data layer, it will pull the items array. So it's in position 17 and then nested within 17. It's in position two, right? And then you can kind of grab it from position two. However, the last time I did this, it was 14, two, and then nested within two, it was items. So you can't just reference items in Google Tag Manager, right? You, you can't, let's say, do something like this. You can't say 17.2.items. That won't work. You can't say 14.2.items, right? Because every time the page loads or every time somebody does something different on the page and a new event fires, that items array will move to a lower position in the data layer. You can't just reference items here because GTM, you're just looking for items in the data layer, won't be able to find it because it's so heavily nested. So I've created a function that will look for items in the data layer. It will cycle through it. And it's good because it's adaptable. It ensures that the code remains functional despite kind of variations in the data layer structure. I'll put a link to GitHub where the code is located, but just for example's sake, let's, let's check out how I'm using it. So if we go here to tags, there's that add to cart tag over here. And here's items that I'm passing to the add to cart event. And let's have a look at it. So if we go to variables, we can find it. items custom add to cart is what I called it. And here it is here. So I basically created a, refer a recursive function to search for items. So this is the items array within the data layer. Okay. So we've called the, the function search items array. It's an object. Now when the items array is found, then return it. You can change this, right? You can change this to if we're looking for values, for example, you can just replace items with values and it will return values. Or if we're looking for, I don't know, let's say, hmm, let's say color in the data, data layer and it's heavily nested and, it, and the position changes, you can, you can change this to, instead of items, you can change it to, to color. Maybe it'll return red or something like that, right? So if the items array is not found, check if the object has nested arrays and objects. Okay. So then in the result, we're creating a recursive call to search inner objects and arrays. And then we're going to return the items array if it's found in a nested object or array. Then of course, we're not going to return anything. We're going to return null if items array is not found in the current object. That's if, if it, throughout the whole data layer, the items array is not there. So this kind of sets the stage, window.data layer, assuming data layer is a global variable. And then we start the search from the top level objects in the data layer. 
and then here. So we're, we're just creating a for loop and then we're incrementing it. And then we're returning the items array if found. And then again, we return null if it doesn't exist. We can test it. So again, here it is in action. Add to cart. There's that custom add to cart. Let's do a preview. Okay, there's the site. Let's add something to cart. Add something to cart. Okay, add to cart. Very good. Now let's go over here. There's that add to cart action. There's my tag, G4 add to cart. Aha, perfect. So here's the items array. So let's say just as names. items and then there's my variable custom add to cart i'm doing the same with value by the way value add to cart right and there it is so it's pulling it so that works just fine we can see here yeah so i'm doing the same for for value value add to cart let's have a look at what value is so it's, it's actually searching the data layer for value because that one is heavily nested as well and every time somebody does different things on the site that increases the event count, it will actually change the position of value. So let's have a look at value. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, instead of searching for items over here, I'm just replacing it with value. And that's all you have to do. Okay, return value. So it's easy to modify. Hopefully this is helpful to everyone. Again, I'm gonna leave the code in GitHub and you can use it in your variable section here, All right? So again, the way to do that, you know, is just click on new, just paste it over here in custom JavaScript and then echo that wherever you want to echo it in your tags. So in my case, I'm, I'm echoing it in the items value so we can pull the items array from my data layer. I'm doing the same for value here. So I'm getting the value of value. Okay, very cool. This helped me a lot. I was super impressed actually once it worked. So hopefully this helps everybody out. Okay, have a good one.